Today's video is on a thousand ways that you might or might not actually die scuba diving. This is going to be episode one in a semi-serious, semi-satire series. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. If you've been diving long enough, you will eventually hear another diver tell you that you will die scuba diving if you do this or that. The other diver is usually well-meaning. Sometimes the advice is good and sometimes it's not. And sometimes other divers say things because of the simple fact that they can. What I hope to do in this video series is to provide an educational experience about some of these situations. Some of these videos will be serious and some of the videos will be satire. Which type of video it will be will depend upon the subject. Subjects which have resulted in a diver's injury or death will obviously be serious videos. On the other hand, I will make satire of subjects which have no basis in reality. Without further ado, here is the first episode. Episode 1 is on the controversial subject of the Air 2 Octo Inflator. As the Air 2 Octo Inflator is responsible for at least one death, this will be a serious video. An Air 2 Octo Inflator is a piece of scuba equipment which replaces a normal BCD inflator. As the name implies, this piece of equipment can be used both as an octopus or alternate air source and it can be used to inflate your BCD. Air 2 Octo Inflators are available from nearly every dive equipment manufacturer. These pieces of equipment have undergone many years of product development and are inherently safe by themselves. Like many other pieces of gear, accidents are usually, but not always, the result of operator error. For example, many divers who use Air 2 Octo Inflators have received no training on their use. We have encountered many divers who do not understand that in an out of air situation that you donate the primary regulator and that you breathe off of the octo inflator. Like many other pieces of gear, not knowing how to use it properly can result in an accident. One of the common misperceptions is that some countries have outlawed the use of Air 2 octo inflators. I have not been able to personally verify this. However, it is my understanding that one country located in the Middle East does not allow the Air 2 to count as an alternate air source. This does not mean it is illegal to use an Air 2 octo inflator in that country. If you use one, you just have to have a separate conventional altered air source octo. Of course, that eliminates the reason why most divers use an Air 2 octo inflator in the first place. The ability to reduce one of the hoses on the first stage by using an octo inflator and no conventional altered air source. If you do decide to use an Air 2 octo inflator, just make sure you're familiar and practice with the way that it is used. All right, so how exactly did the octo inflator accident occur? The accident occurred in February of 2017 in uh, the island of Cozumel. The diver was experienced and they were actually an adult uh, being 43 years old. The details of a diving accident, particularly those that result in death, are frequently incomplete and unreliable. 
in this particular accident, there were some witnesses who believed that the BCD was actually owned by the diver and that the diver rented a regulator set from the shop that she was diving with. Other witnesses are not so sure as to whether this is actually true. It is quite possible that the regulator set was actually owned by the diver and that the BCD was rented from the dive shop. So the diver owned BCD could have had an air to octo inflator and the rental reg set could have had a conventional inflator hose. It does not make sense that the diver owned BCD had a conventional inflator. This is because it would then mean that the rental regulator set had an air to inflator hose. If the witnesses were wrong and there was actually a rental BCD, the BCD would have most likely had a conventional inflator. If that was the case, the diver owned reg set would have had to have an air to inflator hose. The diver left the dock in the boat without completely assembling the gear. Just prior to entering the water, the diver discovered that they could not attach the inflator hose to whatever was on the BCD. The diver decided to dive anyway and the dive shop boat crew allowed the diver to do so. It is likely that the diver intended on manually inflating their BCD when required. Achieving neutral buoyancy on a dive by manually inflating your BCD is a basic open water skill. A diver ascended early in the dive, accompanied partly to the surface by the dive master. The next time the diver was seen was unconscious on the bottom. The two divers who found the victim on the bottom attempted to reattach the disconnected inflator hose. This further fueled the speculation that the inflator and the inflator hose were incompatible. This is something that would have happened if the diver owned BCD did in fact have an air tube. And the rental regulator set had a conventional inflator hose or vice versa. Unfortunately, the diver was not resuscitated and passed away. Whenever the events surrounding a diving accident are analyzed, the objective is to prevent a similar accident from occurring again. So what can we learn from this accident? Sadly, this dive illustrates the importance of several basic safety concepts. First, always conduct a pre-dive safety check. The diver did do this, and that's how the incompatibility was discovered. The second concept is to never dive with faulty equipment. The diver did realize their equipment was faulty through the pre-dive safety check. At this point, the dive should have been canceled. In technical diving, there is a concept which is two is one, one is none. This concept illustrates the fact that when there is an equipment failure, the dive should be canceled. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. I hope this video was educational and thanks for watching.